Uh, right, I'm now going to hand over to Metro Get Shrine, Barbie and Neil, who are from Arability. They are a local charity based down at uh, Blackbush, or across at Blackbush, and they're going to tell us about what they do and how they try to support disabled people and flying. So I'm going to hand over now and turn my seat at the front and be quiet. Mm -hmm. Over to you guys. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for braving the warm weather coming out tonight and for uh, abandoning the pyramids and their things to come to listen to us and drone on here today. It's all about drones. I don't know how we're going to compete with 400 drone swarms and electric things, but we'll, we'll do our best. Here's the first slide, Art. Um, my name is Neil Tucker. I'm, it's my privilege to be a trustee and a flyer with Aerobility, a uh, charity, the same with flying charity. We think preeminent in the UK or possibly in the world. And this is my colleague, Harvey Matheson. Hello. Harvey <laughs> <laughs> works for the charity, he's employed and he also flies as well. We are both qualified pilots and we both are disabled. Well, we're going to tell you a little bit tonight about aerobility, what we do. We're going to show you some, I think quite, we can't quote, we can't compete with the 400 drones, but we certainly can compete with them in terms of tear jerking stories and, and something that I think will, will, will lift your hearts. So who are we? Well, we're based in Blackbush. We have an operation in Tate now. Uh, we take disabled people, and we like to take them out of them what we call dark corners. Um, I had a very dark corner in my life, and uh, it was because of their ability that I was brought out of that, that particularly dark time. Um, we like to say that nobody knows lockdown is better than a disabled person, because quite often a disabled person is in lockdown for life. So we take them out, we, we fly, and we fly on average 1,000 people a year. Uh, a lot of our, our, our flyers are ex forces that might be disabled because of war, whether it's physical or mental. And the vast majority of the people will just have one trip, then that's it, they won't do anymore. A few of us go on to get our pilot's licenses with our various disabilities, but it is all about changing lives. We've been in operation for 28 years. We started off at, at Lash and went down in, in Blackbush, and we offer a range of services to the, uh, to the uh, disabled flyers. So what we're going to do throughout the evening is and we're going to do a little bit about uh, our stories. It's all very well talking about Black Warriors, Bulldogs, flying, going to fast get and cheap booze. That's great. It's all, we love all that sort of stuff. But I think you need to see the stories behind it and hear um, the difference that everybody has made. So we'll start off with myself, um, Neil Tucker. Hi. <laughs> um, I came to Arability in 2018. Uh, I got my pilot's license in 1985. <laughs> but after a short break of 30 years, um, I had an accident in September of 2014. And what you can see there at the top of the screen is the result of the BMW that hit me off my motorbike in 2014. I do joke with some people, but I won't do it tonight with you. I say, if you look carefully, you can see my legs on the left hand side. Because in that accident, not only did I lose my left leg, so half garden, but I've got an arm like Went spaghetti, that doesn't work. But holding my skull, I got 40 screws in my left car, the same replacement, screws to replace Awful halitosis. And, you know, yeah, you agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I was in hospital, laying in bed, um, it was literally a moment of looking up at the sky, I'm not going to be able to do that again. And I was laughed at, ridiculed, you might not even walk away to let a little fly. So, fast forward to 2019, the end of 2019, and I got my second first solo. And the picture of me at the bottom there is of me doing my second first solo when I was 50 odd years of age, celebrating my drinking champagne on my prosthetic leg, <laughs> as you do. And the final picture is of me, oh, that's my real happy place. Uh, that's myself at CFI doing aerobatics in a bulldog, which is a great British design. What do we do? So, as it says quite clearly there, you know, we, we do take people out, change their lives, people of all ages, from six or seven up to the oldest is 98, I think. Um, we provide respite care, respite flights. And it's all about people who are affected by disability. Disability comes in many different forms. It's not just the, the disability that you can see, but often it is a mental uh, illness. And so we're very keen on providing services to, to all people from all aspects of life. Um, I think I've said that quite a bit to rest my face. We've actually 
developed a bit of a niche, uh, I said niche, we developed a bit of a speciality for being able to work with disabled people. We were working with the CAA now, we're consulting with the future, talking about drugs. The future of online flights has to be accessible. We've been consulting about that. We've set ourselves up as, as being quite a, a sister center of excellence of disabled flying, as well as changing lives. Our fleet of aircraft, well, we've got um, the Warriors, the tank, now that one on the top left is the only certified aircraft in the world our free control cars. It's got full oh, left, right, up, down. Cows get bigger, cows get smaller in front of you. And then in the middle, you've got a hand control for the rudder and for the throttle. Well, that's for people with paraplegia. On the other side is the standard stick. Then we've got what I call the, the workhorse of the fleet, which is the Warrior. They don't break, despite, despite my numerous attempts of trying to break it and Harley's attempts as well. We won't give it a good go, but they're built like tanks. So you fly quite a few of those. Um, the bottom one's a bulldog, that's my bulldog. Uh, everybody, I'll be giving the keys to everybody this summer. Uh, the idea was that whenever I get a plane, uh, I was going to swap. Dangerous motorcycles for very safe aerobatics. That's why I told my wife that she believed me. Don't tell me. Um, and I'll be giving that to everybody for this summer. I'll fill the paper because they have to take uh, disabled people up. And just an upside down. Life is more than just straight level. Life is upside down, three or four G. Rolls, loops, spins, sick bags, it's wonderful. So that's what that is. We got the Technam here, which young Ray is now is just not helping us with. It's called the Build a Dream Project, um, built by disabled people and volunteers, bit by bit. And when I say the people, it's a the Zen S C H seven or one. People look at me. So you're thinking, look on their face. So you've never heard of it, is it? So you do the Spitfire, yeah, yeah, so it doesn't look a plain bit like a Spitfire. <laughs> uh, but that's something that we're building in the hangar at Blankenstein. And the top one is the Grob 109 Able. I'll tell you a little bit more about it after you. probably recognise that's a very, very familiar shape in the skies around the UK. Everybody bought 66 of them from the Royal Air Force two years ago. It was the Grob Vigilant. Yeah. You all turn the shows on. Cool. Hello, everyone here. <laughs> 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 Two came from an accident, maybe when I was born. Um, so I would stop breathing just before I was born. Um, when they thought that my heart rate disappeared was a big hit with the machine. And I was wrapped through the time. But it took me there for a while to realize that I actually wasn't breathing. And here we are with a funny voice. And um and seven. So it's come seven from me. I got in a bed on my teeth. Uh, I'm really annoyed about it because it's not as good as story and deal has, but I did try. Um growing up I was always interested in aviation, but I had a baby which was cool. Flying. I was scared of flying, couldn't go on bum in the holidays, had to go through therapy and education to even get on an airline. And this continued all the way through school. Um, and I was actually reminiscing today. I had a um, meeting with a doctor once. Uh, on a totally unrelated subject. And uh, he said, what do you want to do when you grow up? When you grow up? And he went, oh, I said, I'm not really sure. And he laughed and went, well, you're never going to be a pilot, are you? And uh, I'm pretty sure I agreed that I would get a job in the supermarket and we'll leave it there. Fast forward to the end of school, I was in a pretty dark place. So I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. 
Well, I had a nominated to go on a trip to Africa, um, which combined all my fears, all the modern, horrible, sort of nature books. So, year 11 was that. Like how we're going to talk about from the next one. Let's say 16 years old, I was scared of absolutely everything. So I decided I had to go to Africa, and if I live, it might be because I'm living the wrong way. Um, and I went to a place not film by being away from parents. I've actually recently moved out of home. Being away from your parents is quite nice. I'm glad that um, But just before coming in from Africa, I would interview them and then how are you gonna continue the progression once you're back in the UK? And I said, I know the challenge for everybody. Uh, I'm gonna become a pilot to overcome my fear of dying. So I got that, we got about it for two years. Because generally I see things and they never happen. That's how I get through life. Um, anyway, in college, that is that. And I decided to impress that I would be able to learn how to survive. So that's a little story about the company, the pilot at Airbnb. Uh, three years later, Came away with my license. Uh, now getting into an airplane is like getting into a car. I think they come out of it. But without me, I have to say, it hasn't been life changing because of my people like me. So I consider very, very good acquaintances um, with which it is a life changing territory. And now, not only do I know, aviation is my life. Now, I work within the sector of the aviation activities of the day. So, I took all I can out of the charity. Um, and it's been my mission in the past three years to put that in. Uh, so, I now work with charities, leave three grounds. I group broke into photographs. Uh, we go with Okay, just want to say that I think that I was at an air care party last weekend, last week, talking to uh, a bunch of 13 year olds at the beginning of the squadron. And I was saying something, this, this example here, or you can, I wish, I wish I'd said to my 18 year old self, you can be whatever the hell. You want to be, don't be around me. Say, as people, there's always loads of people that will say, you'll never be able to do that. You know, you do what you want to do and you get a plan in place to do it. That's a great example of that. And I think there's no finer person to share the sky with, um, despite the bounds that he gets from us. But it's funny talk, it's funny walk, but then again, he gets that back to us as well. So, you know, what, what a great, great guy to fly with. So, next slide, yeah. And this, this is another, no, obviously, it's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. I try not to get involved in living up with the people. I'm ever mission to go in at the left, very far. I built five to ten people with a little help from able bodied people. That's the really a big thing to community. Coming together. But it will be an egg on and it will not be with you. The disabled people will be able to save people to take to the stars. Uh, it will be a bit of fun and then it will be that thing due to the infinity of patients. I might not stop sponsoring that. It might, but. And the good news is we'll get a farm with this year, so if you want to come see us at the stand, you've got to see the end of the year, the rubbish that did this. Yeah. Um, but the main thing is that part of our ability is to make it, it's mostly a big, 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 a big,
Okay, this is one of our other stories now. It's is from a gentleman by the name of Andrew Kennedy, who's a serving uh, corporal force in the uh, House of Cavalry. Um, he's one of the, the biggest, hilariest, roughest diamonds that you'll ever meet in your life. Um, but the most wonderful guy who's been through a hell of a lot and uh, without fail takes his mother to the AV as well every year. A proper rough diamond. We call him Red 11 because he can't flop, 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 flop. Flop, flop, So I went on a winter tour in Afghanistan in 2010, uh, in 2011. Uh, and I went out there as a um, tourist supply, so I wasn't supposed to be out on the ground. Um, but I was a, a bit instructor on, on, on the platform uh, called the Jekyll. Um, and the dad driver, so I did this, I volunteered uh, to go out. The last thing I remember is pulling out my account turning right and then it's blank uh, until uh, I woke up my back uh, looking at the sky uh, thinking something's going probably wrong. Uh, the doctors came and went by the boat, broke back in two places, uh, shattered my left heel, broke the right arm in half, fractured my elbow, Look on the right side, lost part of the spleen, and nerve damage in the neck and arm. I think that's just an unsightly night out of the town. Um, and that's when really the road that I am now started.
So that's a very wonderful kettle. It's a fantastic story. Amazing thing <laughs> you won't get away with that trip one day, Harvey. You'll be in the middle of it. So when you're going to be where's it going to be? South Wales. <laughs> okay, so that's about Kenna. Um, we'll tell you a little bit more now uh, about Project Able. Did I agree with that? Was I was talking about this or were you talking about it? Ah, it's me, is it? Okay. <laughs> Give it a go. So a lot of you will probably be aware of the Air Cadets, of course you were aware. And probably about 10 years ago, the Air Cadets suddenly grounded their fleet of Grand Point 9 Vigilance, which is a motor glider that's been serving the Air Cadets for some like 20, 25 years. They were grounded overnight because of uh, paperwork issues, let's say, so that we couldn't be sure of the, the age of the aircraft, how many landings are done, etc. Et and the MOD quite rightly in my opinion, turned around and said, okay, we can't miss going out and fly these 
uh, any, anymore because if you have an accident, if there'd be one crash, well, then you can imagine the newspapers are going to be all over this. That's absolutely right. So, big round with them. But we, well, I said, we, our wonderful CEO, Mr. Mike Miller Smith, who um, lives with uh, muscular dystrophy, was an inspiration in his own right. The chap can't move a limb. He's pretty much completely paralyzed, and yet he still manages to drive a car, which is quite amazing. It was his idea that we were going to buy 66 of these condemned aircraft from the, uh, the Royal Air Force and, and then turn them into something new, um, which is what we are doing the, right now. So we've taken the airframes, we've bought 66 airframes, they're currently sitting in Little Biscuiton, and we're returning them to Grob. Grob is putting a new engine on them, he's inspected the airframe. Um, it's certifying them because they never were a certified aircraft because, of course, they were military aircraft at the time. New avionics, new propeller, and it's now the Grob 109B Able. Um, and so that aircraft is being sold to general purchasers like you or I, but by, uh, for every month and sold, Aeroverty takes a little bit. And the aim of the game is to get enough money to fund six of these Grob Ables, which are um, one if I can controls the disabled flyers and spread the love around the UK. Because the biggest problem we have as a charity is there's a lot of people that want to fly with us, a lot of people around the UK, but in fact, 20% of us have a disability that wants to fly. But of course, you always find that they're up in or tip of Scotland, the tip of Wales, down in Cornwall. You know, so we want to spread the love, the air ability around the UK. And this is how we're going to do it with the project A1. But uh, if anyone else will get a new aeroplane, I would not be glad to do one more thing. Do I have to admit that, even though there are some fine developments, that this is very good to be able to be able to be able to be It's got all the power it should have had. It's the aeroplane that we want to know you to do it. Yeah. I mean, we, we took it out to Friedrichs Park just over two months ago for the Aero Expo show down there. One of our pilots flew down there. And bearing in mind, our warriors are guzzling away around nine, ten gallons an hour. This was guzzling 11 litres an hour. So 11 litres an hour, cruising at 110 knots. Um, and also, you can, sorry, 10,000 feet, thank you, yeah, and you can turn the boat off and you don't get worried either. So it's just, it's an incredible bit of kit. Not noisy enough for this Welshman, but then again, I am noisy. Um, uh, but it's it's a, just a one, I mean, the great thing about it is, is it's robust, very robust, very well designed, a great thing to on. So we feel, we've sold our first, we've sold two and a half, I just did two and a half, there's, there's one chap who's got an aircraft which is being converted in the existing Royal 109, is being converted to the Eagle standard with the new car, the new engine, the new city, etc. Um, and he's a very famous flight at Aerobatics pilot, which I'll have to introduce you to because I'm sure you'd make a great uh, dinner, yeah, dinner speaker for you guys. Our ambassadors. Um, well, you all of you would have Buzz Aldrin, I'm sure. Um, I, who's he? Yeah, yeah. Hang on, you. I'm going to show you. Oh, good. Charles Lindbergh. Who knows who Charles Lindbergh is? Hands up. Come on, hands up. No, no, hands up. Steve, yeah. James Stewart. Hands up because James Stewart is. Harvey. Anyway, so, so Buzz Aldrin is one of our ambassadors. He's obviously been a very famous chap. There's a couple of people that, that you might not have heard of. You might have heard of Arthur William. You've seen him on the television, Channel 4, disabled pilot in a wheelchair. He was the first guy in their ability to get to PPL. He's an ex-Marine. Um, well, there's, there's no such thing as an ex-Marine. They're always a Marine. Um, and he was, uh, he was paralyzed, not in a in war or in Athens, and the boat was a good car accident in Germany, coming back on leave, turned upside down, 18 year old boy broke his back, and that was him. I was, I was a poor Marine, but went on fly with us. And, and the main picture there is of a lady by the name of Jessica Cox. You know, I would encourage you to Google her ability, Google Buzz Aldrin if you have to, Google Jessica Cox, but do, do Google Jessica Cox when we get onto that. And just look at her YouTube video. She's the only licensed pilot in the world with no arms. Now, that's incredible. But what I find most incredible watching video her videos is how she puts her headset on with her feet, how she puts her tablet into the instrument panel with her feet, 
how she checks the fuel level using a dipstick, climbing up a step ladder. Oh, God, risky just thinking of that. It's just, it's, it's, just <laughs> it's amazing. So, so have a look at Jessica. She's just, just an absolute inspiration. Okay, I'm going to want to Harvey can tell you a little bit about virtual variability. Um, I, I to do this, we need to go back to a couple of years ago. Some of you may have heard we had a little pandemic. Um, so sorry, it's a Western healthy. But both to the overnight, everybody lost 90% of their income. And so we need to, to adjust the way we do things very quickly. Because even though everyone's locked down, the people we need to reach, we still need to be there for them as a jealousy. And so going around really inventing uh, virtual everybody, which is a way of bringing the magic and wonder of life to people in their living. So virtual everybody. Availability is that uh, explain to a few things. Our main one during COVID and continuing afterwards to was inspire ability. Now, this started in person prior to COVID and moved online and still continued and bringing people um, from around the world, pioneers in aviation and, and people into people's living rooms. So people like Jessica Cox, uh, this guy up there, Jesse, who was in a very pilot and um, boy in school, who was a black man pilot uh, during the Vietnam of wars and after. And we are developing and making grants for pay, a way of making our instructors grants for services available at home. And you would say flight simulations. So these are a great introduction for people into flying people, particularly who have learning difficulties who may need to see what's going to happen. Where actually does. So we are currently developing a system where people can log on to a flight simulator at home through a web browser and participate in a virtual flying lesson um, from the comfort of home. Because even today, even now the world's back to normal, there are still people. As everyone goes up, they still can't leave their house or their hospice or their care. So it's making air ability accessible to the better environment. The main one was the armchair air show. Now, during COVID again, I hate to go back to it, but there were no air shows. Um, and air shows, if you can remember, they were pretty well attended. So during COVID, we came up with the idea of putting on an air show, a three hour episode with previously unseen footage from across the aviation industry. And it went remarkably well. So last year we decided to do it again, uh, but slightly bigger and slightly better. And uh, these are the figures uh, for our first year, actually, so 90,000 views, 60,000. So we have now partnered with Brigham Hill Airport, they are a great hotel representative team. And two weeks ago, we did our third on air show. Again, a connection on three beers, the unseen footage, and speaking to our personalities from across the industry. 
But as well as that, we had a easier, a very easier, easier to wear for a smooth one. I know it gets to the state for a moment. I know that your friends are saying, say, big and new. Basically, they put some pretty years we can go right here, but that doesn't matter if they look fine to know. They might shut the ankle down for us to create joy back to space. But the uh, secret of the on generation is you don't see the aeroplane doing its display. You see the toilet slime that enjoy the cockpit doing their lips more. So it's like an airplane, but just for that bit more personal and just that little bit better. <laughs> um, and we're hoping to be back next year, so people for oil. I do, I do know it's an argument you're talking about how the pilots fly in the plane. That's just how you fly, actually. Like a good one around steroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm scared of you people. I mean, it's not a proper equal, it's a great rock. It's a great rock. And so I think onto our final story um, of a gentleman by the name of Justin. Uh, there's a little bit of a history behind our relationship with Justin. Um, Justin is a, um, a deaf and uh, going blind gentleman from St. Helena. Now, we all know St. Helena because of the history with uh, the Napoleonic Wars, but I've got to, got to confess that I have to dig out an atlas to find out exactly where it was in the, in the South Atlantic. It's probably as far south as you can go before you start hitting penguins, that's for sure. But a size of a quarter of the Isle of Wight with a population of Crowthorn. Um, but one gentleman decided he wanted to raise money for aerobility by doing wait for it, a marathon run around the island, the island places, around St. Helena. So I don't know how many loops it was, but it was quite a lot of loops off. And we wanted to, to sort of pay back the love there. And this gentleman um, came over from St. Helena. He's 44 years of age. His mother was leaving him alone in the UK for his very first time and pretty much forever because of the standard of care that he could get here in the UK. Profoundly deaf <laughs> and going blind. There's going to be a point where he is now is currently his tunnel vision, but it will ultimately be totally blind. So we did come up with the thought, pay back for love and say, well, look, what can we give this guy here apart from wonderful memories and to, to, to think about memorize when he when he does eventually go blind. So this is Justin, here he is, and this is his flight. They've done a real sign language between the mother and son over the years. It's not an official sign language. This is the usual one. Very powerful, isn't it? We see lives that being changed like that. So we should do a couple of videos tonight, and we've also told you about our stories about how Gretzky has changed the lives, continues to change the lives of the disabled. I would say now this is a shameless plug here. There are two blue buckets up there, somewhere by the doors. We do rely on donations, both corporate and individual. So you know, whatever you can spare, if you can shop a penny in the pot tonight, all go to aerobility.com and donate.
We really appreciate it and so many the people whose lives you help change. Thank you for being. Thank you. 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 Thank you.